sometimes we just don't feel that we're being acknowledged or honored by the people around us. We might wonder if there's something wrong with us when that happens. We start getting stories in our head about ourselves. Oh, I'm not trying hard enough. Or there's something about me that's unacceptable. Or we start kind of self-loathing or self-blaming. But most often in blended families, the people aren't actually the problem. It's the complex dynamics that create the challenges. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds, understanding the kids' perspective, romance and partnership, parenting with great teamwork, and yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show Mm -hmm. for episode 133. That's exciting. (laughs) I can't wait till we hit 200. We got to just keep plowing in order to get there. (laughs) Anyway, we're so grateful for you to be here with us every single week and We want to invite your feedback. We would love for you to go into Spotify or on Apple Podcasts and just hit one of those little star ratings. You can just kind of scroll down toward the bottom on your smartphone or your tablet, hit a star rating. And if you're really excited about giving feedback, you could also take just a moment and leave us a review and tell us in words Mm -hmm. uh, what you're experiencing with the show. We would love to hear from you. Yes. So anyway, we just want to invite you to do that. And don't forget to subscribe as mm-hmm. well, wherever it is you're listening. Uh, or I guess it's follow nowadays. We don't use the word subscribe <laughs> anymore. I guess I'm getting old, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, what do you say we just hop into the episode, honey? That sounds good. Cool. Now, you're tired of my babbling. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at the calendar. Right now? Well, a few minutes ago. Oh. And I noticed that Mother's Day takes place... 12 days. It's 12 days from the release of this episode. Oh, yeah. Okay. Less than two weeks. Hey, guys, listen up. Yeah. (laughs) Now, one thing we know is that Mother's Day and other special occasions, Mm. of course, can sometimes create challenges for blended families. That's just a reality. Yeah. Tension can seem to bubble up, and Mm -hmm. sometimes we find ourselves in awkward or sensitive situations that lead to disappointment, frustration, even pain. Mm. Now, over the past several Mother's Days, we've released blogs and podcast episodes Mm -hmm. that focused on all the challenges of the occasion. Yeah. And we offered some tips on navigating those challenges. Right. And we also shared some practical steps you can take as a couple leading up to Mother's Day that Mm. will certainly help to ease the tensions and proactively face the challenges. Yeah. So we've put a link in the show notes to episode 34 called How to Avoid Mother's Day Disappointment mm-hmm. so that you can discover the strategies in that episode, mm-hmm. which really are for everyone. Yeah. Bio moms, stepmoms, husbands. Yeah. Yeah. So you might want to go head over there, check that out for some helpful tips after you finish this episode. Oh, right. Oh, I thought maybe that was it for the episode. <laughs> no. Just go to look at those tips and you'll be good. No, uh, you know, today we thought we'd just shift the focus a little bit and, and talk about kind of the positive, empowering ways that you might experience genuine joy on Mother's Day, even in the imperfection. Mm. And like you said a little while ago, it's not mm-hmm. just about Mother's Day. It's about really any sp- you know, special occasions right? because often they're imperfect and there's possible disappointments that could come your way, right? whether you're a bio mom or a step mom or both. Mm -hmm. And so we want to help you to maintain your own sense of joy and emotional stability, even when things don't go the way you expected. Right. So, you know, that sounds kind of like an unrealistic goal, honey. (laughs) 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 I'm just calling it like it is. I mean, I know it's important to have a positive mindset. Sure. But for most of us, Mother's Day is a pretty big deal. Okay. And because it's a family oriented holiday, which Mm -hmm. most of them are, 
we can be pretty impacted by the behavior of our family members and how they treat us on these special days. Yeah, I can, I get it. Like, I'm sure that, um, that mothers and stepmoms really like want to be recognized because it's like the one day Mm -hmm. where it's like, Hey, let's show some appreciation for all the thankless work you do the other 364 days out of the year. And there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so I, I I get it. Mm -hmm. I get that there's a lot of emotion tied to it, but yet today's discussion in the midst of it, it might challenge you as a listener, but I just want to encourage you that even if it feels a little unrealistic, like Kim was just talking about, to experience joy on Mother's Day when these interactions with your stepkids and your bio kids aren't exactly perfect, mm-hmm. I, I still don't believe it's an impossible goal. Mm. And I'm hoping that as you listen all the way through the discussion, that you're going to discover something new today that might just make your imperfect Mother's Day a day of celebration and joy. Mm -hmm. We can still celebrate and experience joy, even in imperfection. So even if you've experienced disappointing, painful mother's days in the past, (laughs) or if you're dreading it this year, I think we can still make some progress. Okay. So I actually believe this is possible too. Okay. Only because I recently lived through something similar Mm. just a few weeks ago. On another special occasion, my birthday. Yeah, that's right. Let's share (laughs) share a little bit about that. Well, this was the first year, my first birthday, that one of my kids completely forgot my big day. (laughs) Yeah. My 26-year-old daughter didn't even acknowledge my birthday. Mm. And as of today, she still hasn't. Mm -hmm. So as I was thinking about that, I realized that I understand the mixed feelings that can come when you're hoping to be acknowledged and celebrated on a special occasion and you really want to enjoy the day, yep. but there's this nagging pain, hmm. a disappointment because it's not the perfect day hmm. you were hoping for. Hmm. I get that. Hmm. And honey, you of course did a great job celebrating me on my birthday and so did hmm. our son Jacob. I'm just patting myself on the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> And I did get a really sweet text message from our daughter, Phoebe, who's away at college. And all of that felt great, right? I felt loved and honored, Mm. but (laughs) the lack of acknowledgement from Annika kind of put a damper on the day for me. I'm just being really honest. I can see that. And I had to manage the tension I felt inside. Mm. One part of me felt special and celebrated, but another part of me felt slighted and forgotten. Mm. Now, I think I did a pretty good job working through my disappointment, some of which I still feel because Mm. every day that goes by and Annika still hasn't remembered or acknowledged (laughs) my birthday. Yeah, I hope she doesn't listen to this. (laughs) She she probably won't. (laughs) But every day that goes by, I have to struggle with the imperfection and the reality of the current situation. Yeah. And it isn't easy, but I found a way to experience genuine joy. Mm. And at the same time, I've had to grieve my disappointment. Yeah, I agree that you did actually handle the disappointment really well, even though it wasn't really easy. Right. So maybe you could just share a little bit about how you managed those difficult emotions and how you were able to experience joy even when that day really, really was imperfect. Mm. And and hopefully some of your strategies are going to be helpful for those listening as they approach Mother's Day. Yeah. And, you know, I too am probably going to need to continue on with these strategies if Annika forgets to acknowledge me on Mother's Day too. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I bet she won't, but it's possible. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think the most significant and challenging piece of all of this for me is learning how to maintain a healthy balance in my mind and not allow my negative emotions to take over. Mm -hmm. I wanted the perfect day. I wanted to be celebrated by all of the children that I love. Mm. And when it didn't turn out to be that perfect day I was hoping for, my emotions started to get a bit heavy. Mm. So I had to find a way to acknowledge and examine the facts and then maintain proper balance between the facts and my emotions. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what does that really mean for you? Like, Mm -hmm. what was going on in your mind when you realized that Annika had forgotten your birthday? (laughs) 
What if you could experience a community that's all about healthy support, guidance, and practical strategies that help you thrive in your blended family? Well, now you can. Blending Together is a supportive community for blended family couples just like you. Mm -hmm. We've educated and supported hundreds of couples navigating the unique challenges of blending a family. Now we're inviting you to join our community and experience the transformation that awaits you. But you'll need to act fast because we're getting started soon. Mm -hmm. Blending Together is not just another community. It's a place where you'll find practical, real-life strategies for building unity as a couple. And creating more connection as a family. Experiencing partnership in parenting. And even dealing with that difficult ex. Blending Together is a safe, growth-focused space where you get to connect with us, and maybe more importantly, with other blended family couples who truly understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Along the way, you'll discover practical tools, guidance, and hope that empower you to find a future full of confidence and connection. When you join Blending Together, you'll get to hop into a variety of resources like access to our private Facebook group and online learning platform, monthly coaching meetings, monthly Q&As, and you'll even get to vote on the content for our monthly workshops. Mm -hmm. Blending a family can often leave couples feeling alone or isolated and stuck, and quality support can sometimes be expensive. That's why we're offering you access to all of this at a super low monthly rate, because every blended family deserves the opportunity to thrive regardless of their budget. That's right. So join us in the Blending Together community and unlock the secrets to successful blending. Together, we can create a future filled with hope, connection, and peace. But don't wait. Click the link in the show notes now. The doors will be closing on October 8th, and you don't want to miss out on this unique opportunity to create the future you really want alongside other couples who genuinely get it. Mm -hmm. Hey, we can't wait to meet you there. What was going on in my mind was somewhat confusing, right? And I think this can happen to all of us when we're processing information and we're trying to make sense of a situation. And at the same time, our feelings have been hurt. Yeah. So one part of me was sulking. <laughs> and the story in my head was that Annika didn't care about me, mm. that I wasn't important. Mm. But another part of me was protecting I started thinking of excuses for Annika. <laughs> oh, she's been so busy and her phone broke so she can't reach me. I was protecting myself from the hurtful reality. And I was also attempting to protect Annika by making mm. up excuses for her. So it was yeah. kind of twofold protection there. Yeah. And you kind of have these dueling thoughts then. Right. Kind of feeling sorry for me, but also protecting her even yeah. in, the, in the midst of that. Uh, that whole experience. That's a really great yeah, so self-observation yeah. for you to recognize what was going on there. I want to consider that from another angle for just a moment. So you're talking about your relationship with your bio child. Right. But I think it's really easy for a step parent to have these same kinds of dueling stories going on in their head. You know, they're hurting when a stepchild fails to acknowledge them, which happens quite often, mm -hmm. right? And they can build those negative stories that the child doesn't care about them. Right. And at the same time, if they've done any learning around things like loyalty binds or the losses that kids experience and all the difficult emotions that they, they go through when a family blends, then the step parent can also try to excuse their stepchild's behavior and, and try to try to be understanding, which is from a good heart, but sometimes that leads to stuffing it. Right. right. I remember wrestling through some of those things when it came to stuff like Father's Day, you know, a couple of times over the years, especially in that season where we were in the family court battle with your former mm -hmm. spouse and Annika was feeling really stuck in the middle. Right. right? We had been 10 years in. Mm -hmm. I felt like I'd already kind of earned the right to be acknowledged. Yeah. But in that little three year season. Boy, yeah. she didn't want to, like, why would she want to acknowledge me when she's stuck in the middle of this court battle between you and her dad? And so it kind of made sense to me that she, you know, couldn't really make a big deal or acknowledge me. And so I wanted to protect her and not, you know, 
force her to... Yeah, you wanted to be understanding. But it still hurt. Right. By that time, I'd invested nine or 10 years into her. Yeah. And so it really, it really hurt. And so I think that same dynamic plays out in step relationships. Yeah, it's confusing. Mm-hmm. And whether you're a bio or a step parent in this situation, the challenge comes when you aren't able to balance these two realities in a healthy Mm, way mm -hmm. because there's truth to both sides both sides of the story right so you're saying i'm imbalanced (laughs) (laughs) sometimes (laughs) (laughs) for me i was feeling hurt and Mm. disappointed on my birthday and at Mm. the same time Annika has experienced some major setbacks recently and she's in a season of survival and struggle right now that's true It's understandable why I'd be disappointed that she forgot my birthday. And it's also understandable why she might have forgotten my birthday. Right. So I had to face both of these realities and not let one story become magnified over the other story. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if you were hyper focused on your hurt and your disappointment and the imperfection of the day, then... Your day could have really been derailed and pretty well ruined, right? Right. You would have had a hard time experiencing any joy at all. Exactly. Mm. I can definitely slide into that pity pit if I'm not careful. (laughs) (laughs) You know that, honey. Yeah, that's kind of your tendency anyway when you're hurt, right? Poor me. Yeah. But at the same time, if I became hyper-focused on protection, either from acknowledging my own pain or focusing only on giving empathy and understanding for Annika then I might end up stuffing my disappointment and pain. Mm. And usually that ends up backfiring because at some point I'll explode in some really unhealthy ways because I'm building some secret resentments there when Mm. I'm stuffing down emotions. Yeah. So I didn't want to stuff my negative emotions and I knew that I needed to acknowledge my own pain without getting stuck there. Mm Mm-hmm. And I needed to balance that with understanding and grace for my daughter, who currently lives six hours away and is dealing with some tough stuff in life. Yeah. So sounds like you had to be kind of intentional that day. Is that right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I had to decide how I'd handle all of these mixed emotions and find the healthy balance. Yeah. And not just internally, but externally as well, Hmm. because I wanted to experience joy on my birthday, even though it was imperfect. Okay. So you're saying you kind of had to take your thoughts or those stories in your head captive Mm -hmm. and really examine them so that you could avoid the imbalance of getting overly hyper-focused on just your pain or overly hyper-focused on protection. Is that, did I get get that right? Yeah. Okay. And honey, you helped me do this externally. So I I had to get it up and out of my head. When I captured those negative thoughts that Annika forgot about my birthday, rather than throwing myself in a pity party in my head, (laughs) which I can do, (laughs) Mm -hmm. or allowing my negative emotions to ruin the day, I chose to verbalize my disappointment to you. So that's what I mean by externally. Yeah, I remember that. And Mm -hmm. you weren't like plummeting. You were just kind of matter of factly of like, this this sucks. It it hurts, right? Mm -hmm. So speaking it out loud was a healthy way for you to, to just validate and acknowledge your own pain, right? That's right. Okay. And I'm sure you remember me telling you how not hearing from Annika was really hurtful that day. Yeah, I remember. And then I said, I'm going to go get her. (laughs) No, that's not what you said. (laughs) But I I wonder, you know, was that hard for you to admit and just, I mean, actually even verbalize and take some effort to get the thoughts out of your head and and out to me? Yeah, it was. Mm. Because we're talking about my biological child here. Yeah, yeah. And I really kind of wanted to just feel sad and wallow in pity for a while. Mm. But I also wanted to enjoy my birthday, Mm -hmm. which is why I chose to verbalize what was going on inside. Yeah. And honey, you did a great job at just affirming my feelings without trying to fix the situation or minimize it or add to it, right? You didn't wow. you didn't call Annika up and tell her she needed to reach out to me. You didn't go try to get her. You did a really good job. That honestly, that's a miracle in itself because we both know how yep. tempting it is for me to jump into fix it mode. Yep. And and I haven't told you this already, but I have to tell you I actually had to fight the temptation of reaching out to her saying, "Hey, do you remember it's your mom's birthday?" Um, I but I also yeah. knew 
that if I had done that and you found out about it later, then you'd be in that whole thing of, oh, she only did it because Mike reminded her. And I was just like, I just can't fix this. So I, I just had to be there for you. And, yeah. and so I'm assuming that it was helpful for you that I really just had gave you a listening ear and I affirmed that it stunk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes all we need is for someone to tell us that they understand why we're feeling what we're feeling in the moment. Yeah. And that's basically what you said. Yep. And when you did, I experienced some relief and I received the validation I really needed. Mm -hmm. And that helped me to move forward and simply enjoy my birthday. Yeah. Things were not perfect, mm. and I had to acknowledge that, but I could still find joy in the imperfection. Yeah, okay. So I feel like we need to pause for just a second and point something out here. You said that I didn't try to fix or minimize the situation. Now, we're talking about you with your biological child mm -hmm. here, but I think sometimes when the roles are reversed and a step parent is experiencing something painful related to their stepkids, and then they open up and express that pain to their spouse, the child's bio parent, right? Mm -hmm. Often that step parent is met with some defensiveness as their spouse tries to jump into protective mode oh, with their yeah. kids, right? The bio parent might try to minimize or dismiss the partner's pain because they feel the need to protect the child. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, they want to stick up for their kid. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've definitely been guilty of that myself, honey. Mm. You know that. I would tend to make up excuses or downplay Annika's behavior when you'd express a frustration. Yeah. So instead of validating your feelings, I discount them mm -hmm. by defending Annika. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's another facet of these challenging dynamics mm -hmm. when protection is used in an unhealthy way. And it also explains why a step parent might end up repressing their emotions yeah. and get really weighed down by negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then resentments might grow. Mm -hmm. This is an example of how our stories can get out of balance yeah. when we aren't able to verbalize externally what's actually going on internally and our feelings aren't validated. Yeah, for sure. You know, so that's just a reminder, you know, if your spouse is coming to you to express their emotions, it's helpful if you're able to just listen with empathy and validate them, mm -hmm. even if you might not agree with their perspective or there's another side to the story. But when you can avoid getting defensive or dismissing their emotions, it actually helps your spouse to eventually balance their negative emotions with empathy and understanding for the situation. But you actually make it harder for them to have some empathy and understanding when you discount their experience or try to just fix things or get defensive or dismissive. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Even if they're complaining about your bio child. Right. There were probably a lot of times along our journey where we would have avoided some of our own conflict mm -hmm. if when I had a complaint, a legitimate complaint. Yeah, it was valid. About neglect or feeling dismissed by Annika or whatever. If you had just been able to say, man, that really stinks, Mike. I'm sorry that you're having to experience that. Without feeling the pressure of having to change anything with Annika. Right. Just, I, I understand that's hard for you. Yeah, that's all exactly. it takes. Mm -hmm. and, and I wasn't necessarily looking for you to take action with Annika. I mm -hmm. just needed validation. Right. And so it works both ways mm -hmm. in the bio relationships and the step relationships. It, it's kind of what we all need as people, right. as humans. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out because regardless of your position or role in the family, Learning how to listen and validate your spouse's experience is critical. Mm -hmm. Now, honey, you just shared a minute ago that once you verbalized your feelings and got some validation from me, you were able to acknowledge that things weren't perfect, but you could still find joy. So how, how did you do that exactly on this imperfect birthday <laughs> of yours? Well, once I was able to externally express my negative feelings and have those feelings validated, then I was able to balance my disappointment with empathy for my daughter. Mm. So without discounting my own pain, I explored some possible reasons as to why she may have forgotten my birthday. Mm. And I was able to put myself into her shoes and come up with some valid reasons for her oversight. 
Now, this didn't magically erase my disappointment, Mm. but it did help me to balance the stories in my head. And then I chose to focus on some truths about my relationship with Annika. I know that Annika loves me and cares about me. And I have some evidence to support that. Yeah, lots of it, actually. Yeah, I mean, one example is last year on my birthday, she exceeded my expectations Mm. by making some special arrangements for my birthday gift to be hand-delivered to me Mm -hmm. because she lives across the state from us and wasn't in town. Yeah. And her gift and her card were really thoughtful and expressed loving care. I see. So she exceeded your expectations last year. So this year she had to make up for that. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So so first you acknowledged your pain and your disappointment to me verbally. And when you did that and kind of surfaced it and you got some validation, that took enough of the edge off the pain Mm -hmm. to allow yourself to have some empathy for Annika without discounting or excusing the situation, right? Right. It's the balance. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. were able to find that appropriate balance between pain and protection. And then you were able to just focus on finding the truth. That's right. Okay. You know, a while back, we did an episode all about the stories in our heads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we did a deep dive with special guest Mark Warren around how our negative stories often dictate our reactions Mm. and how they end up creating disconnection in our relationships. I didn't want the negative stories in my head to damage my relationship with my daughter. Right. And that's why I needed to find some truth to focus on. That's so good. I I think that's a great strategy for all of us because Mm -hmm. we're going to experience pain and disappointment in our blended family experience. Absolutely. Uh, Right. If you haven't, just wait. It's coming. I promise. (laughs) And and as a step parent, I think this is something that we can do to help navigate some of these special occasions like Mother's Day and Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Because if we can do what you've described, hon. And find that appropriate balance between our pain and our tendency to protect. And we're safely able to express that pain to our spouse or a trusted friend Mm -hmm. and then put ourselves in our kids or our stepkids shoes and gain some empathy for their losses and perspectives. Then at that point, we're in a really good position with the right mindset to focus on the truth. Yeah. And it's an important step. If we want to experience joy in the imperfection of blended family life, it might not just be special occasions. It could be tomorrow. Yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Whatever the situation or the occasion might be, this is a powerful process. So getting yourself to land on the truth about your relationship with Annika was important. Mm -hmm. And that's important in all of our relationships. So let's talk about a few practical ways to focus on the truth in those relationships. Absolutely. And I don't think I would have been able to experience joy on my birthday without focusing on the truth. Okay. And so the first practical step is to acknowledge what you have to be grateful for. Uh, yes, you're, you're happy. Oh, so powerful. Yes. Mm-hmm. I shared before on the show about my gratitude journal that mm-hmm. helps me to stay focused on the positive things, the true positive things in my life, yeah. which also helps me not to get stuck in the negative stuff. Hmm. So here are just a few of my birthday entries from my gratitude journal. Oh, so your actual entries from just a yeah, couple of weeks ago. Just your birthday. a couple okay. weeks ago. Yummy oysters and seafood by the bay with my boys. I didn't eat any oysters. I think they're gross. <laughs> but you ate seafood. And that so was did. actually my grateful. I didn't, I wasn't forced to eat oysters. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Another entry in my journal was my grandpa's sweet birthday serenade on the harmonica. <laughs> and he's almost 99, so it's pretty I cool. Know. That's yeah. awesome. And he had some loving, encouraging words for me as well. We all get harmonica serenades from Grandpa when yes, it's our birthday. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> Another one was my thoughtful husband. Oh. Flowers, a card, and a hot rock massage at the spa. That guy sounds like a stud. <laughs> And then a long, tight birthday hug from my son and his willingness to spend time with me. Yep. And he also picked up my favorite lotion as yeah, a gift. That, that was, was sweet. sweet. He was sweet mm-hmm. and present all day. He, he was. had a great attitude, yes, too. Yes, I'm very grateful. Pretty good for a 17-year-old boy. Yep. <laughs> 
And then I also had on there sunshine breaking through the clouds and hail. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it we hailed. Had both. That's right. <laughs> a beautiful day after all. Mm-hmm. So even though I experienced some painful disappointment because Annika was a no show. And also when it hailed on my birthday, I was <laughs> yeah, pretty unhappy that's for true. a bit. You guys have no idea. Hail does not yes. mix on her no. birthday, no. <laughs> I was still able to list five awesome things to be grateful for that day. Yeah, that's great. Now, you know, there's days where we can only identify one or two things, and maybe they seem small in comparison to what you hoped for, right? right We're going right. to have those times and those days. But instead of leaning into just feeling sorry for yourself, you still have the opportunity to choose to be grateful for whatever those small blessings are, Mm -hmm. even if they seem insignificant. Right. Because sometimes even this insignificant things really do matter. That's absolutely right. You know, there are days when all I have to write in my gratitude journal are little things like sunshine and spring is in the air or a cuddly pet to snuggle with or (laughs) Gluten-free pizza that's actually good. That's an entry in my journal. Our warm, cozy, safe home. Mm. A cute little bird on a limb. Clean Mm. air to breathe. Mm. Mike buying me a coffee from my favorite coffee shop. That must be written down almost every day. (laughs) No. I've learned that when I take the time to recall and count my blessings, I find that I've got a lot of positive things going on in my life. Mm. Things I truly am grateful for, even if they're small. Yeah, small things matter. Mm -hmm. And focusing on the positives instead of the negatives are going to make a difference in the amount of enjoyment that you can experience on any given day. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that this is actionable. Right. We're not just, hey, let's buck up and have a positive attitude. No. It's like, no, there are genuine, tangible things that I have to be thankful for today. Yeah. And we all can name those things. Mm -hmm. You know, almost every step parent can come up with at least a few positive memories with their stepchild Mm -hmm. too. And and so I just challenge step parents as you listen to this. Uh, You probably remember, honey, I used to carry around this silly little rock that Annika gave me in in a sweet moment Mm -hmm. that just reminded me about how excited she was to give me this silly little rock as a gift. It was evidence. It was hard evidence, mm-hmm. right? It was a rock. Mm-hmm. It was hard evidence to show me that she was thinking about me and she offered me a meaningful token. Mm. That memory and many more over the years were helpful for me to recall in those times when I didn't feel appreciated or accepted by right. her. And I don't keep a gratitude journal like you do, mm-hmm. but I, I kind of have a running one in my heart and in my head. I tend to lean more toward positives in life anyway. Um, but it's so beneficial for all of us Mm -hmm. and and I can hold on to those things. Mine is more about tokens and what I see around me than writing it down in the way that you do. So there's more than one way to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe a, a next step for you is to start a gratitude journal. If you haven't already done something like that, just to keep a record of those times where you feel connected to each member of your family, regardless of how small it is. Or maybe you just need a little box of tokens. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've got a whole drawer in my bedside table Mm -hmm. that is just filled with little boxes and trinkets and all kinds of things. Homemade stuff. From the kids Mm -hmm. that sometimes I open that and I go through it and it serves much like your gratitude journal. Yeah. I'm just out of curiosity for your journal. How many entries do you have now? Um, that last entry was 710. Ooh, that's and that, awesome. Yeah. And I've been keeping a journal for quite a few years mm-hmm. now. And what I found is that I can look back at past entries and remember the joy and contentment I felt when I wrote those things. Yeah. And just reading and remembering those things from the past makes me really happy in the present. Sure. Yeah. It can actually elevate my mood when I'm feeling down. Yeah. So give it a try. What have you got to lose, right? Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So yeah, recognize and focus on the things that you have to be grateful for. That's tip number one. Right. right? What's the next one, honey? So the next one is staying securely rooted in the truth of your own good character. Mm. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. 
Uh, you actually give people permission to make you feel what you feel because mm-hmm. nobody can actually make you feel anything. Right. Sometimes we just don't feel that we're being acknowledged or honored by the people around us. We might wonder if there's something wrong with us right. when that happens. You know, we start get stories in our head about ourselves. Oh, I'm not trying hard enough. Or there's something about me that's unacceptable. Or I don't have anything of value to offer. Or we take all the blame on ourselves thinking, oh, there must be a really good reason why I'm this stuck outsider in my own family, Mm. right? We start kind of self-loathing or self-blaming. But most often in blended families, the people aren't actually the problem. It's the complex dynamics that create the challenges. So instead of questioning your value or falling into that trap of insecurity, you can do something a lot more productive. You can start listing out all the positive and true things that describe you. Like, I bring value to this family. Mm. My motives are good. I want good things for my spouse. I want good things for my child and for my stepchild. Um, I'm loved, right? I'm loved Mm -hmm. by my spouse. I'm loved by my friends. I'm loved by my kids. I'm a positive influence in the Mm -hmm. lives of my family and the people around me, right? There's all kinds of things I can point to and say, wait a second, Mm -hmm. I've got some pretty decent character that I'm building here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, often step parents feel defeated when they've tried everything they can think of to care for and bond with a stepchild. And when the child doesn't reciprocate with warm and fuzzy words of appreciation and love or fails to honor them on a special occasion mm. like Mother's Day. Yeah, or Father's Day. Yeah. Then the step parent loses their confidence. Mm. And sometimes they even give up on trying to build a relationship with that child. That's right. And you know what? That's kind of tragic because the name of the game is perseverance and consistency. Mm. <laughs> yeah. One marketing coach that we've worked with in the past often says the name of the game is to stay in the game until you win the game. Right. And I think that's great advice for step parents, right? The truth is that feeling rejected by a step kid is really a hard place to for a step parent to be. But I want to encourage you not to give up or lose your confidence in the midst of that. Look, you, you can't force someone to love you. You cannot force your stepchild to love you. I'm going to say it again. You cannot force your stepchild to love you. But... It's up to you to be someone they'll eventually want to love. Mm. I I think that's just so powerful. It's up to you to be someone they'll eventually want to love. And love in a blended family takes time. Oh, yeah. So instead of giving up or succumbing to insecurity and defeat, you actually have the opportunity to choose to focus on the bigger picture and consistently bring your best self to your family day after day after day, Mm -hmm. regardless of how everybody else around you is responding. And we realize how challenging that can be. I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm speaking with experience here. I know (laughs) that this is really hard and I'm also not suggesting that we do any kind of dismissing of poor behavior, but we, sometimes we get hurt and we throw in the towel and we just throw it in a little too soon. Yeah. So if you want to just kind of understand a little bit more about why this takes so much time and the things that the kids struggle with to to accept a step parent and how you might be able to create some strong bonds with resistant step kids, you can go back and check out episodes 37 and 39 and we'll link to those in the show notes. Yeah, there are common challenges that every step parent needs to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And again, the people aren't the problem. Yeah. The dynamics are. Right. Now, back to your list of positive and true things that describe you. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to include your good character traits. Even if your stepkids don't give you credit for the goodness you bring, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they never will. Yeah. Mike's good character traits have been such a blessing for Annika over the years. Yeah, like my killer dad jokes. Uh, that's not what I was thinking about. I just told one. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, Annika has learned so much about integrity and financial responsibility and commitment and self-control. And mm. I could go on and on and on about mm. your good character. Thanks. Honey. And, you know, I knew all about your character when I married you. Mm. It's 
one of the reasons why I married you. <laughs> but it did take a long time for Annika to see your worth and acknowledge mm. all the positive things you bring to the table. Yeah. Now she's able to give you those warm, fuzzy words of appreciation and love. That's true. But it took time for her to see your worth in her life. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah, so we just encourage you, hold on to the truth about your worth and the value you bring. Mm -hmm. Stay secure and just keep being you. Mm -hmm. Live out your truth rather than trying to prove your truth. Oh, I love that. Say that again. Live out your truth rather than trying to prove your truth. Yeah. Stepmoms, think about what that means on Mother's Day. Yeah. If it doesn't fully go your way, what does it look like to live out the truth about your character rather than getting hijacked or trying mm -hmm. to prove that you're worthy or, or that, yeah. that that's your that's truth? That's not a good position no, to be in. No, no. You can, you can find joy even mm -hmm. if a stepkid neglects you on Mother's Day. I promise you, you can. Absolutely. All right. One more tip as we're talking about how we really hold on to our truth. And that is to take inventory of what you're doing well. Mm -hmm. Make a list of all the things that you're proud of, the things that you've done well, the situations that you've handled really well in your blended family. Mm -hmm. Maybe you responded with patience when one of your kids or stepkids was having a meltdown and you were able to maintain some self-control, or maybe you were able to calmly diffuse the situation mm -hmm. somehow. Maybe you've mastered a new skill recently that's really benefiting your family, like multitasking or emotion coaching or organizing carpooling cheerleading from the sidelines right, right. <laughs> whatever it might be that's a really great thing that you're doing well maybe you've overcome a challenge big or small write that down mm -hmm. acknowledge it talk about it with a trusted friend and and be kind to yourself mm -hmm. with these things maybe you resisted the urge to turn a molehill into a mountain mm -hmm. <laughs> it took me a while to learn yeah. about that one <laughs> But instead, you put things into their proper perspective before you reacted. Yeah. That's a hard one. I, I, I just know. But maybe you were vulnerable with your spouse and you shared something that was really important to you, even though you were worried about how they might react mm -hmm. to it. If we chatted with you long enough, I bet you could come up with a whole giant list of things that you're doing really well. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes we tend to be really hard on ourselves, mm. especially when things aren't turning out the way we expected. Yeah. But instead of blaming or beating yourself up, choose to show yourself compassion and focus on what you have done well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you've messed up in the past or anywhere along the way, yep. which we all do, by the way, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Choose to make amends, forgive yourself, and move on. Instead of rehashing all of your mistakes, identify what you can learn from your mistakes and mm. then let it go. Yeah, totally. You know, I, I can remember so many times uh, really vividly in my mind that I really did mess up with mm -hmm. Annika, but I don't ruminate on those no. where I'm really focused, especially these days is like, Hey, you know what? There's some things that I did well along the way. And I believe that really brought value for her. So it helps me mm -hmm. to stay rooted in my truth. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Now as mother's day approaches or any other special occasion, by the way, we just want to encourage you to proactively prepare yourself to maintain a healthy balance in your mind so that you don't allow any of those negative emotions to take over. Right. And decide to intentionally take the three steps that we've just talked about today. Acknowledge those things you have to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Stay securely rooted in the truth of your own good character. And then just take an inventory of what you're doing well. It's basically three different lists. Maybe, maybe it's time to go get a special little notebook mm -hmm. and make three different lists that you can use as a great tool on an ongoing basis. Uh, you could continue to add things to your list and keep yourself focused on these positive truths so that you can experience joy even when things aren't going perfect and you feel disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've got one simple mindset that you can apply to everything we've talked about today. And here mm. it is. Stay curious, not critical. Yeah. 
Stay curious about what might be going on with each member of your blended family and avoid jumping to quick conclusions or Mm. labeling them. Yeah, that's so good because curiosity is actually the anecdote to criticism, Mm -hmm. right? And don't forget, this applies to you as well. Stay curious about what's going on inside of you. And remember that just because something feels bad doesn't mean it is bad. Right. So stay curious about those stories in your head. A curiosity mindset is going to actually stop you from attaching meaning and motives to what you see other people doing. And instead, it helps you to just simply acknowledge the stories that might be building in your head. Right. And then steer clear of criticism Mm -hmm. for others and for yourself. A critical spirit rarely experiences true joy. That's right. When you find yourself blaming others or blaming yourself for the imperfections and the disappointments of the day, stop yourself and get curious instead. Yeah. A curious spirit is open to understanding and accepting reality, even if that reality is a bit messy Mm. or painful and imperfect. That's right. You know, we live in a perfection driven society. Oh yeah. It's interesting that you just talk about, you know, we've talked about it being imperfect a lot. There's a lot of pressure that we all have to, you know, keep it all together. To look good. Yeah. I mean, I want to look good on Instagram and Facebook Mm -hmm. and TikTok. And to have it all together. But the truth is that perfectionism drives chronic stress and persistent dissatisfaction. Mm. Perfection it's overrated. Yeah. So if you're struggling with perfectionism, we've, we've got another link in the show notes to episode 14, way back, that has three helpful steps to overcoming your perfectionistic ideals and disappointments. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't want you to get stuck in this, you know, cultural perfectionism demand. No. And our goal in our own blended family and our hope for yours as well is that you're going to shoot for imperfect progress. Yay. Imperfect progress is still progress. Actually, recently I've been noodling on this idea mm-hmm. that perfection and progress are incompatible. Because mm. if we reach perfection, what do we need to make progress for? Right. I love progress. I want to mm-hmm. make progress. So I, I think we're just shooting for the wrong thing if we're, uh, if we're asking for perfection. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyway, yeah. Imperfect progress. Shoot for that. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that experiencing joy on Mother's Day or Mm. any special occasion is not an unrealistic goal, (laughs) even if things don't go as expected. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we want you to experience joy Mm -hmm. on Mother's Day. Hey, next week, we're going to have a simple step just for the hubbies out there, Mm -hmm. for the guys of what can you do to help your wife experience joy in this upcoming right, Mother's you can Day. partner. So, that's right. So mm-hmm. don't miss next week. Uh, guys, you want to listen into that. And ladies, you might want to nudge your husband and have them listen to it as well. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to make today's episode a wrap. Until next time. Until next time.